I've been watching a lot of Flash lately to cure my depression, and I gotta say, my depression isn't cured, but this show is hype. Are you an everyday nerd? Hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next episode. Yo, welcome to your Everyday Nerd, the show where we slowly get caught up to shows that are five years old. I'm your host, Zack Snyder, and today's adaptation Saturday. Happy Saturday. On Saturdays, we talk about comic book adaptations or anime adaptations or any other kind of adaptation like that. It's basically an extra day in my schedule to give me the excuse to watch more comic book related stuff because there's so much of it out there and I still want to talk about it on the channel. It took me forever to finish Flash season two, mainly because of everything going on in my life, like, you know, dropping out of college and paying rent, that kind of stuff. <laughs> Takes a little bit of time away from watching a TV show, but I finally finished Flash season two, and I gotta tell you, it was super hype. So I'm gonna be talking about a lot of Flash and Arrowverse and that kind of stuff in the upcoming future. So if you guys wanna go ahead and hit that subscribe button, cause we're gonna be here, we're gonna be here. And if you're excited about that, I'm excited for you. Also, I know a lot of people have told me, they're like, Flash isn't the best superhero show, Daredevil is. And I'm like, all right, dude. All right, we're gonna, we're gonna figure that out. I'm gonna watch Daredevil soon after I finish the Flash and get a little bit of Arrow in. And uh, I'm gonna be excited to talk about Daredevil soon. So. You know, if you if you recommended it to me, I'm gonna watch it. I'm a man of my word, so get ready. But anyways, today we're just gonna be talking about The Flash Season 2. There will be minor spoilers, but I'm gonna try to keep all the big spoilers out so you can still watch the show, because I know a lot of you guys just like the show for my stupid jokes and my crazy antics. So that's, that's what Your Everyday Nerd is all about. I'm, I'm here to entertain you. I don't wanna spoil everything that you enjoy, but anyways, there might be minor spoilers. Not even after the Earth is gone. We have to disrupt the motion. It cannot be stopped. I have to try. Like I said last time in my first episode about Flash Season 1, I really love this show. It's got almost the perfect balance of comedy and drama mixed in with the superhero elements and sci-fi most of all. But when I finished season two, I had an immediate concern. See, season two of The Flash is really good. It's got some really not so great moments, but overall it's really hype. It's exciting. I wanted to watch more, but after I finished it, I just couldn't help but think, did this show peak a little bit too early? Here's what I'm talking about. The main villain of season two of The Flash is Zoom, a multi-dimensional speedster whose main motivation is to destroy the multiverse and become truly the fastest man alive, who's, you know, Barry Allen is technically the fastest man alive. So if you get what I'm saying, he wants to destroy Barry Allen too. Now his motivation is kind of lacking, I mean, really? Your motivation is to just be the fastest man alive? That's, that's it? Sounds like you just had like a sad childhood or something, if that's your only motivation. Oh, oh wait, <laughs> Zoom did have a sad childhood. See, what's interesting about Zoom's background is it's very similar to Barry Allen's. His mother died when he was very young, except a little bit difference here. Barry didn't actually watch his mother die. He was able to get out of the way quick enough in order not to see that completely. Also, Barry's father was framed for the murder of his mother, but as we found out in season one, Reverse Flash is the one that kills Barry's mother. Now the difference with Zoom is, Zoom as a child saw his mother die right in front of him, and the person that actually killed his mother was his father. So here we have a really tragic backstory that pretty much explains why Zoom is <laughs> in the head. Now the main difference between Barry and Zoom is the fact that they both ended up getting powers, but they started using it in different ways. See, Barry Allen had a tragic backstory, but he let this tragic backstory make him a better person. He ended up becoming a CSI agent, he did good, he helped people, and then when he got his powers, it just kind of made his goodness even more so by becoming The Flash, saving Central City over and over again. For Zoom, it's literally the complete opposite. Since he saw his mother getting killed by his father, he ended up becoming a serial killer. He killed a lot of people, got put into an insane asylum, was about to die on death row, and then he got his powers, which he then uses to become a supervillain, 
literally trying to destroy the entire multiverse. My point here is that we have such a very strong villain for season two. He's got a tragic backstory, his motivation is lacking a bit, but I guess it makes sense, sure. But most importantly, he's the perfect antithesis to Barry Allen, and that's what I really enjoy so much more about Zoom than I do the Reverse Flash. Now, don't get me wrong, I still love the Reverse Flash, but Zoom had this other element to him that I really liked in season two. See, everything that I said just barely scratches the surface as to how important Zoom is to this season. Because yes, Reverse Flash had a mystery to him and it was really cool to see that unfold. We knew from the very beginning that Harrison Wells was a villain. We didn't know how he became the Reverse Flash, but we knew that he was the Reverse Flash. For Zoom, it's completely different. We see our expectations change so much throughout this season. And the true mystery really is not only who is Zoom, but how is Zoom, why is Zoom, and where the hell is Zoom going in this series? You have this dope mystery and then, and then you take into account that we have the multiverse introduced, we have a bunch of doppelgangers, we have more time travel. Season two just becomes the epitome of why I love this show so much. The doppelgangers are one of my favorite part about this because we get to see such good actors playing different roles, which gives us more interactions, newer things to see on screen. And it was just one of the coolest moments that I saw, especially with like Harrison Wells, who we've seen, but now he's playing Harry Wells, which sounds like the same person, but he's got a different personality. And I like the fact that the show is able to incorporate these different elements to make it more interesting. We also get the introduction of characters like Jesse Quick and Wally West, which if you've read any comics whatsoever about The Flash, you'll know that these are two very important characters in The Flash's lore. So I'm really excited to see how they're gonna be used more throughout the series. Mix all of this with the time travel that we see in the series, and it really makes this show more of a what if series than just a regular superhero show. They really can do anything they want with it, and that's what's so unique and cool to me. It's honestly why I don't really want a solo Flash film from the DCEU, because what more could they do that they haven't already done in the show? Especially considering the fact that there's still a whole two and a half seasons I haven't even seen yet. I mean, sure, the budget will be bigger for a solo Flash film, but like the CGI in the CW series is not bad. In fact, it's pretty good for most of the time. So I don't know what else they would incorporate into a solo Flash film other than let's get this character more integrated with the Justice League and we all know how bad the Justice League movie is. I, I did not like that movie at all. So my only problem with season two of The Flash is where can they go now? Can we truly have as great of a mystery as the Zoom mystery that we had in season two in future seasons? I mean, Zoom was pretty badass and he threatened the entire multiverse. How can we have somebody that's a bigger threat than that? We've seen the multiverse, we've seen doppelgangers, we've seen time travel. Can they really top that in a future season? And I should say, I'm really grateful for how good this series is so early on. I love season one. I think I might have loved season two just a little bit more than season one, even though I think season one is objectively better. The, the problem here is that when we get to like season 10, episode 20, if it's an episode about Kite Man, like, <laughs> Kite Man's not a real threat. Are you kidding me? I mean, I'm going to be hyped because Kite Man. But like... He's not as big a threat as Zoom in season two. So what's gonna make that episode stand out to me? Why am I gonna care about future episodes and future seasons if season two was as good as it is? It basically takes a significant amount of risk out of the show. It'd be just like the MCU putting Avengers 4 earlier on, like the third movie. It'd be like, what? Why are we doing this so early? Actually, you know what it is? You know what it would be like? It would be like doing Batman vs Superman as the second movie in the DCEU. <laughs> Do you remember how bad that was? The only issue there is that's more of an execution problem than a pacing issue. But the same thing kind of goes here. Season 2 is so good. How are they going to make it better in the future? Now I will say I am still excited to watch the show. If anything, the show can actually improve on some smaller things that'll make it better in future seasons 
whether it has these big time-altering multiverse things in general. Number one, the drama elements need to be better. There were multiple times in season two, especially the first like eight episodes, where it kind of dragged a little bit. And that was because of this subplot about Francine, who is Joe's ex-wife and Iris's mother. Now it does introduce Wally West into the mix, which is super important. Glad we got to see him, glad he's in the show. But the Francine subplot was boring <laughs> and not worth my time. If we can have better pacing with the drama in future seasons, then that'll make those seasons better than season two. Number two, I'm really looking forward to more comedy elements. I mean, we get a lot of comedy moments within the show, especially in between characters. Harry and Cisco is one of my favorite interactions that we see in season two, but I want more of that. I want some more of this campiness almost, not to the extent of 1960s Batman with Adam West, I don't want that kind of campiness, but I do want some more clever jokes and all that kind of stuff. And that goes into my number three, which is make the metahumans better. I want more funny jokes and more comedy moments, but I don't want that to necessarily be included with the metahuman of the week. See, <laughs> the metahuman of the week, you know, W-E-E-K, the seven days in a week usually ended up being metahuman of the week, W-E-A-K, because these metahumans are weak. I saw more and more metahumans in season one and season two that I just dislike more than the ones that I did like. Now, I know that there has to be a metahuman of the week throughout most episodes. You gotta fill 23 episodes in a season. There's liable to be some kind of filler but if you could just make these guys more badass or kind of funnier, just cleverness, like have that kind of stuff incorporated into the metahumans. Part of this is not having bad actors play these characters, even though they're throwaways and maybe not having their powers be so lame because really, are you going to tell me that some of these guys are a threat? Like I said about the kite man thing, Kite Man's going to be dope because of how outlandish he is, but only if the actor is as good as the character. One of the things that season two did really well about its metahumans is including the doppelgangers into the metahumans. We got a lot of cool s*** from that, and I was really appreciative of that. So while yes, I'm concerned about The Flash season three and onwards, I will say that I'm still just as excited to watch season three as I was for season two. There's still things that the show can improve on and I'm excited to see that unfold and hopefully, hopefully I'll enjoy the future seasons as much, if not better, than seasons one and two. Well, I guess I'm a sellout now. Here on YouTube, it can be difficult to take things to the next level. When you've decided that you want to take video creation seriously, that's when it's time to either give up <laughs> because YouTube's really hard or buckle down and get yourself into a mentorship group. Here's where Awesome Creator Academy comes in. Sometimes you need a bit of help, structure, and accountability to be successful as a creator. The Awesome Creator Academy Mentoring Group gives you a place where you can get training, advice, and support when working on your projects, growing your brand, and building your business from people who are working just as hard as you are. I've personally been a part of the Awesome Creator Academy for a year now, and not only has it helped me be better focused and make more realistic goals, but it's put me in a place with other creative professionals that want to succeed just as much as I do. It's a place where I go to share my successes, my failures, and everything in between, and I highly recommend it. And with all that being said, if you check out the link in the description box below, you can become a member of the Awesome Creator Academy today, which will not only help you become a more successful creator, but it also makes sure that I'm able to eat this month, because let me tell you, when you're ready to take YouTube to the next level, you still have to eat. I know, it sucks. And that's all the time we have for today. If you like the video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you dislike the video and because you're a hashtag hater, I guess you can hit the dislike button. Go ahead and subscribe for more Your Everyday Nerd. I'm really excited to continue the show. I'm really excited to be on an actual schedule and hopefully I'll be there this upcoming week. So if you wanna go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you guys get notified for future episodes of Your Everyday Nerd, that would mean a lot to me. We're almost at 500 subscribers, which is insane. Thank you everybody that's supported the show and the channel so far and I will see you tomorrow. Goodbye.